Hi, this video lesson is going to be about what happens when we apply forces that are at an angle now. Everything that we have looked at up until this point has been forces that are solely in the direction of motion. So every angle has technically been either at zero degrees, so parallel to the motion, or at 90 degrees, which is perpendicular to the motion. Well, obviously we know that not every force needs to be applied in the exact direction of motion. If you push a shopping cart, you're pushing down on that handle on the shopping cart, but it's moving laterally, even though you're applying a force both vertically and laterally that's causing the net motion that we see, right? The resulting motion of those forces. So a lot of times when we push or pull things, we're not exactly in the direction of motion. If you picture anything that moves laterally, you're not always pushing or pulling perfectly laterally or something that's moving vertically. You're not always pushing or pulling perfectly vertically. Sometimes it just makes sense to be at an angle. So when we go about finding our net forces here, if we're given an angle, the only force that is going to count is the force that is parallel with our motion. And the reason behind that, again, it kind of goes back to the two-dimensional motion thing. Your perpendicular components are independent of one another. So if you get a force at an angle, yes, that is actually what's happening, but the result of that force is going to be your components, just like we saw in two-dimensional motion. We're going to have a vertical component of our force. We're going to have a horizontal component of our force, just like we did horizontal and vertical components to velocity. Again, remember, now because we're dealing with forces, this is going to tell us which way something is pushing or pulling, not necessarily the di actual direction of motion. So what we notice on the diagram here is in the top right, we're going to see some force applied at an angle theta. We've got the weight pulling down mass times grav the acceleration due to gravity. We have friction force pulling to the left, and we have the normal force pulling straight up off of the surface because that's the way that the normal force operates. The bottom right diagram is then breaking this down into the horizontal and the vertical components of that applied force. And notice that our horizontal force is cosine and our vertical force is sine. If we take a look at another example here, so if I draw an object, and if we do a free body diagram of this object, it is going to have weight. We're going to go ahead and say that this object is on a surface, so it's going to have a normal force. Now, we're going to apply a force at an angle. So we're going to go right here for that force. This is going to be some applied force, which means we are going to have a horizontal component and a vertical component. So we will call this f of x. We will call this f of y. The breakdown here f of x is our horizontal force, and f of y is our vertical force. Again, these are simply our components that we're going to be working with in order to find what is the net force which is causing the object to either accelerate or maintain its current state of motion, whether that's at rest or movement at a constant velocity. Now, just because we can, right, we will have a little bit of friction pulling back against this. We're going to go FR. Now, if we know our applied force, right, let's say that the applied force that is acting here is 100 newtons. Right. And our angle, right, we've got an angle theta that is going to be in there as well. Let's say our angle is, oh, that looks pretty close to 45 degrees, so let's call it 45 degrees we can find f of x and f of y. So if we start with the horizontal component, that would be the adjacent side. And we would know the hypotenuse is 100 newtons. So we know the adjacent side, and we know the hypotenuse, so we would be looking at cosine here. The cosine of our angle, so if we go cosine of our angle, which is 45 degrees, that is going to equal the adjacent side, which is f of x, divided by the hypotenuse, which is our applied force of 100 newtons. So f of x, our horizontal component, is really 100 newtons times the cosine of 45 degrees. You end up getting 
a horizontal force F of X of 70.7 .7 newtons if we go three sig figs. And we will because I'm going to make this 100 newtons right there. And we're going to call it 45.0 degrees. We'll go three sig figs for everything here. If we want to find our vertical component now, same idea. We're looking for F of Y, the vertical component. Opposite over hypotenuse will be our sine. If we do the sine of our angle, so the sine of 45 degrees, same thing. Our, adjacent, or our opposite side here is going to be F of Y, our vertical component. Our hypotenuse has stayed at 100 newtons. So F of Y is going to be 100 newtons times the sine of 45 degrees. When you perform the calculation on that, you will end up getting the same value. So we'll get F of Y is also 70.7 .7 newtons. Now the reason why that happens is because we're at a 45 degree angle. If you remember your unit circle, 45 degrees is when each of those side lengths is going to be equivalent. And all of this is based on the direction of the angle. So if I zoom in on our right triangle trig here, notice where the angle is located. As we start changing where this angle could be located, so we would refer to this as an angle is applied at a force measured from horizontal. Right? So here's our horizontal. We would say this is measured from the horizontal. If we start measuring from vertical, that would either be here, or we could draw the triangle this way, and from vertical would put it in that location there. Again, just kind of be, be aware of, of the wording that we're going to see on these angles. But what this tells us is that the overall amount of force that we apply does not get used in terms of the acceleration. We're going to see some of this force be used horizontally in F of X, some of it be used vertically in F of Y. And depending on the motion of the object, depending if it's moving horizontally, if it's moving horizontally, then F of X would become what we would use to find our net force. If it's moving vertically, F of Y is what we would use for our net force. And then we would, we would be able to combine those with the other forces in that direction. So let's say that this object was moving laterally, right? It's moving horizontally. And we know that F of X is 70.7 .7 newtons here. Well, this is 70.7 .7 newtons, and let's say friction is acting at 20 newtons, for example, 70.7. .7. 20 is in the opposite direction. The net force there would be 50.7 newtons to the right. Let's say this object is accelerating upward. So we would have 70.7 .7 newtons of vertical applied force, we'd be able to add that to the normal force or whatever other vertical forces we have here. We would then be able to subtract the weight to find the overall net vertical force as well. So keep in mind that actually in this situation as it's drawn, our F of Y added to the F of N would actually be causing this object to accelerate vertically as well because we would have this vertical component added to a normal force that is set equal to the weight. By technicality, we have an unbalanced vertical force here. We have more force upward with the normal force plus our vertical applied force in comparison to the weight. So based on how this diagram is drawn, this object would be accelerating to the right and it would be accelerating up at the same time. We would have two accelerations happening in two different directions here. Going back to the slide, we see here the formula. So F net is our mass times our acceleration. Again, we can get net force either by knowing the acceleration or we can get net force by looking at the free body diagram. Here's an example problem that I would like you guys to, to take a look at. What I would like you to do is to pause the video, attempt the calculation, and then come back to see the answer. Okay, welcome back. First thing you're going to want to do here you're going to want to draw a free body diagram. So we have our block on a frictionless surface. That's important. It's a frictionless surface. So we have weight pulling down. And here, we actually can calculate the weight. 
And we're going to do that in a, just a separate sidestep here. So our weight is mass times the acceleration due to gravity. So our weight is going to be our 45 kilograms times 9.81 meters per second squared. That would be the acceleration due to gravity on Earth. The weight of this block with three sig figs is going to come out to be 441 newtons. That becomes our weight. Again, nice thing. The weight is always going to be your mass times your acceleration due to gravity. If you know mass, you know weight. If you know weight, you know mass. Looking at the context here, we're pulling above horizontal. We're going to assume that this object is going to be accelerating horizontally. So what that tells us is that we are at this 30 degree angle here. So if I draw in an applied force at about a 30 degree angle, and it's pulled with 35 newtons of force. I apologize for the lack of scale. I just want to emphasize that applied force that we have at a 30 degree angle. So again, intentionally off scale here because I want you all to see this 30 degree angle and I want to emphasize that point here. So 30 degrees. What will the acceleration be? Based on this information, because we're on this frictionless surface, we're going to go ahead and draw in our normal force. That's actually going to be less than the weight. And the reason behind that is because we have this little bit of vertical force acting right here. So technically, our normal force as we see it, F sub n, is not going to be equal and opposite to the weight because of that F sub y. So our weight is going to be greater than our normal force. So our normal force is going to be the weight of the object minus that extra vertical component that we have here, which is going to be, it's not going to be important for the, for the problem here to solve, but that's what we would end up getting because the sum of the normal force plus the weight, if we were to add this over, is going to be equivalent, or, is, or minus f of y, add f of y over, that vertical force plus the normal force would be equivalent to the weight. So we want to know what the acceleration is, which means we need to find what the net force is acting on this object. In this case, our net force is going to be acting horizontally. So as we go about solving this then for f of x, that's going to be what our applied force is going to be that's causing the acceleration. By doing this, again, we're going to want to use cosine because that's going to be our adjacent side. So the cosine of 30 degrees is going to be the ad adjacent side, f of x, over the hypotenuse, which is 35 newtons. Our horizontal component, which is causing the acceleration, will be 35 newtons times the cosine of 30 degrees. That comes out to be a horizontal force of 30.3 newtons. There are some extra digits there that are going to carry on. So that becomes our horizontal component. Going into then solve this for what is the acceleration, this f of x becomes our net force because it's the only force acting in that direction. So our net force is going to be equivalent to the mass times the acceleration. So we're 30.3 newtons, and I have kept the entire value on my calculator, times the 45 kilograms, or equals the 45 kilograms times the acceleration. We're going to get 0 0.674 meters per second squared, or meters per second per second. Notice that we can get our net force from the free body diagram. Use that net force within Newton's second law of motion to be able to calculate our acceleration. That's what we look at in terms of our forces at angles. Again, being able to calculate it and being able to conceptualize what's happening and which force is going to be important that is going to be dictating the acceleration or lack thereof of the object.